we want to be different. We want to be better than that team. And um, I think we got the guys in this locker room to do it. Um, we got some good character guys in the locker room, um, some fighters, some dogs on the D-line. Just um, I'm just really excited. You know, I'm, I'm glad we got this bye week here next week where – a few banged up players can get healthy, get in the training room, uh, rest their bodies, and then hopefully come back the week after we're all fresh and, and ready to go. And also just to get film on our opponent. You know, we're also expecting uh, Winnipeg to, you know, they're, they're champions and they're champions for a reason. And they got a, uh, I know their coach a little bit. And uh, he, uh, I know he's going to have them ready to play, but uh, I'm, ex I'm excited for this buildup. But I'm also excited. I, I get more excited about playing the game because that, that's really what it's about. But the good thing about Trevor, he anticipates throws. So it's going to be exciting to see that this year. Um, and yeah, man, I'm just don't have to do too much when you got a guy going to put the ball right there where you need to be. So yeah, it makes it a little bit easier on me. So I'm just ready to, to get and develop more chemistry to see how things really going to pan out. It feels good um, just to, to be getting prepared for another team. Uh, got a little feisty in our last practice, not today, but yesterday. Just we're tired of going against each other, right? And every every team experiences that in training camp. Um, so to have a different colored team, you know, just line up against you, it's very exciting. And, and to get back into the routine of a season, I think is, is really exciting as well. So um, a lot of meaningful football coming up, and, and I'm just excited about the opportunity at hand. What is up, my friends from Canada and the United States of America? This is Mark Perry, editor of CFL News Hub. Welcome to another episode of the CFL News Hub show, a weekly recap of the Canadian Football League. Remember, if you want to be part of the show, just email info at CFL News Hub with your MP3s or videos. You can do that as well. And make sure you smash the like button and spread the word about the CFL. And if you like football, then subscribe to our channel. We'd appreciate that. On this week's show, it is finally here, my friends. We don't have to talk about the XFL. We don't have to talk about, you know, whether or not there's going to be a season. We are here. It is the day before the first game, week one of the CFL season. We have a preview of this week's games. We'll get into all of that. We run through all of my picks, fantasy, and so much more. That's what's going on in this week's show. Finally, we can talk about football. I'm super excited. Plan my night out tomorrow. You know, got my cauliflower pizza, my adult beverage, probably most likely be a root beer. And then going to sit back and watch the games. We'll get into where you can watch the games, especially if you're in the United States. TSN in Canada, United States, ESPN2 for at least Thursday night game. We'll get into that. And so much more. Also, a couple of nice announcements. First, I want to announce that the show will now be in audio format. And you'll be able to get that on all your favorite podcast gimmicks, your podcast in, uh, applications uh, coming Probably by in, in the next week, it should be out there. So if you're somebody who's commuting to work or you're going on a jog or go on walks or whatever, all those things I recommend, especially having a job would be a good idea. You can do uh, listen to it online instead of just on YouTube. So we're excited about that. Putting it out live. Also, we, we need a name for this show. I, I mean, just calling it the XFL News Hub Show. I'm fine with that, but if you guys could come up with a better name, maybe we'll, if you come up with something really good, maybe we'll give you a little CFL merch for your idea. So in the comments, leave us, whether we're live on Facebook or YouTube, leave a comment, what you want to call with good ideas, good name for the show. I mean, CFL News Hub show is fine. It's just not it isn't catchy or whatever, and I could change it whenever we want. Also, Excited, too. If you didn't catch the XFL News Hub, we did an interview with Derek Dennis. We all know about him in the CFL, his current contract status with the Elks. He goes into detail that he's talked about that on other people's shows as well. We really wanted to get him on that show to uh, you know give his take on because it was really interesting how he got from the CFL to the XFL and kind of his his journey in football um, and also he's being a fellow at New York, but also excited to announce that Derek Dennis's podcast will be part of CFL news hub. So those should be coming out soon. Excited to have those as part of our family. So we also have podcasts like the XF, the Markcast. And speaking of the Markcast, 
they're going to have a live show Thursday night after the first CFL game. So I'll be hopping on that. You should too. It'll be fun to chat everybody live after the game and kind of get everybody's reaction. So that's on YouTube. You can find the Markcast on XFL News Hub. Derek Dennis is a podcast. You'll be able to find that on CFL News Hub. And if you follow us on all the social medias, we'll pump it out there. When, when it's live and get that spread the word so you come check it out. That'd be a lot of fun. So remember, that's live after Thursday's game. Also, yeah, we're new to the block, and there's nothing wrong with that. you got to start somewhere, but it's very exciting. We have over 1,200 followers on Twitter, which isn't bad considering we started this site in March. So that's pretty good. And over 4,000 followers on Facebook. So we're excited about the Facebook. And, and, and as somebody who has covered um, the XFL – I mean, for it was just five games. But I can tell you that interest really in football picks up now. Uh, you know, this stuff over the summer, traffic is light in NFL circles and XFL circles, all that. It's, it's really when fans are engaged when the games are on. And I'm really curious to see what happens on Thursday with the games being on ESPN2 and what kind of reaction we have there. Question of the week is who you think that will be the worst team in the CFL. So chat room, why don't you let us know what you think there. I have my picks. I'll get into that later. And that's it for this. So that's what we got going on here. So we'll hit the news real quick. Then we'll get into all my picks. I'm going to take a commercial break and do the social media stuff and get to all of you guys as well. So without further ado, let's just get into some CFL news this week, shall we? All right, first up, reminder, you got before the season kicks off, get the CF, the 2021 CFL season kickoff guide, especially if you're new to it. Download it at 70 pages. I have it all uh, printed out and in a binder ready to just kind of check it out during the games on Thursday. I just want to remind everybody to go to that. Just go to TSN and, or just look up, uh, and it would be in the show notes if you're interested in that kind of stuff. The schedule is on CFL News Hub as well. So you have the full 2021 schedule if you need to check it out. And we'll go over the schedule in a second. This week's games, actually we'll just do that now. Yeah, so this week's games get the Thursday at 8.30 p.m. Oh, these are all Eastern time. Uh, you got Hamilton Tiger Cats, Winnipeg Blue Bombers. We'll get into my picks. Then on Friday night, you got your BC Lions and Rough Riders. Saturday, you got a double shot of 7 p.m. starting with Toronto and the Stampeders. And then uh, Ottawa against Edmonton. Those are your st- stack of games this week. Montreal Alouettes are on a bye. Yes, kind of strange. And our poor Josh Davis doesn't have a team to cover. So he'll be covering the first game. Uh, uh, for us on X or on a CFL News Hub, so you got that for you there. Also, if you're a fan in the United States on um, ESPN, it'll be on ESPN two, but also ESPN Plus. They have all the games listed down here that they'll have, and so if you're online, you can go check them out as well. But the game will be on ESPN, ESPN two, coming up. Now, we have our staff predictions, but before we get into that, a couple quick no- news and notes speaking of ESPN. So they just put out a press release today that ESPN and ESPN Plus welcome back to CFL with a complete 68-game schedule. So all games in the 2021 season will be available in the United States on ESPN2. ESPN News, which I don't have, I think you got to pay extra for it, or, and, or ESPN Plus. And, of course, tomorrow's season opener features Hamilton versus Winnipeg in the 2019 Grey Cup rematch. Uh, All 68 games, blah, 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 all part of a multi-year agreement with ESPN, ESPN News, ESPN Plus will combine to present the CFL game live. And, of course, they got all the playoff games. uh, They go through all that. Four decades, the relationship. Uh, Here's an interesting stat. With the CFL originated in 1980 with a contest between the Toronto Argonauts and Montreal Alouettes. Alouettes. It was the first live football telecast in ESPN's history. I did not know that. I found that pretty interesting. That's pretty cool. So that the first football telecast 
for ESPN live football was from the CFL. Then uh, they got a breakdown of all the games. So this weekend's games, for example, so you'll get ESPN two uh, Friday night and Saturday. You'll get uh, Friday. You'll get on uh, ESPN plus, and then ten o'clock Ottawa Red Blacks Edmonton Elks will be on ESPN too. I'm really curious to see what the ratings look like and traffic looks like. But then as you go through, then you get a lot of these games are mostly on ESPN plus. ESPN, yeah, mostly ESPN Plus, some ESPN 2, a lot of ESPN Plus, especially when the NFL season's going. It is all ESPN Plus, and then you'll get ESPN 2 towards the end. So at least to get a couple games on ESPN 2, at least to start, just to kind of get fans interested, and clearly once the NFL season starts, then that's about it. If you're also, if you have Sirius XM Radio, and I have Sirius XM Canada, I believe, on my radio, because I had put it on once. They and the CFL inked a three-year agreement that allows subscribers to listen to all CFL games from across the league, including playoffs and Grey Cups. Uh, CFL, Sirius XM Canada, the country's leading audio entertainment, will offer subscribers across North America every game uh, through to the 2023 CFL season. So that's great news. Uh, stream subscribers on Canada Talks Channel 167. So every regular and postseason game, including the uh, 108th Grey Cup in Hamilton, will be available on Sirius XM Satellite, streaming su- subscribers on Canada Talks Channel 167. For your f- my French f- brothers and sisters, 174. So that is pretty cool. So you can get all the games, not only if you want to listen to them, you can listen to them on uh Sears XM Canada that came out today. Also, Bet Regal teams up with the CFL to become the league's official online sports gaming partner. Now, I don't know, if, <clears throat> it doesn't say exactly how much they got from this, but the Canadian Football League announced a multi year partnership with Bet Regal, making it the official online sports gaming partner of the CFL. As part of the announcement, Bet Regal revealed. Uh, you know, some Hall of Famers did that, blah, blah, blah. Excited business partner, Canadian Roots. Bet Regal, a Canadian company that launched in Europe, has seen immense success in key European markets and now looks to expand in its home country. Already the global betting partner for Dundalk FC of the Irish Premier League becoming the CFL's official sports gaming part marks Bet Regal's first major North American sports partnership. Uh, talking about the brands, Bet Regal will be prominent in league marketing strategies beginning this season. It will have distinguished media assets throughout the playoffs and Grey Cup, including post scene jersey patch, partner of the Grey Cup Festival, as well as presenting sponsor for exclusive premium experience during Grey Cup weekend. Oh, all right. Both of the league have updates on more fan facing initiatives and this will be include a free to play sports book experience, CFL squares and a race to the 108th Grey Cup, a pick'em style game. Uh, additionally, some other it doesn't clearly say how much money they got for this. I don't think this is the 20 million that they allegedly were going to get, but clearly this will help. And here's your first gaming partner. I would assume that other partners will come along the way as well also finally the cfl introduced a policy similar to you know what in the nfl's policy that they have initiated a policy that will hopefully prevent any cancellations of games due to you know what basically it was similar to the x uh, the nfl's policy that was pretty heavy-handed uh but you'll i'm not going to talk about it too much because on the YouTubes, they don't like when you talk about you-know-what. So that information is on the league as well. I was wondering what they were going to do about that. Now, on to some predictions on CFL News Hub. Our staff, on, and I was out of this one. I'll let them run with this. They have their picks for predictions for the 2021 season. Josh Davis put this together for everybody, but who's going to win? Who is the Grey Cup runner-up, most outstanding player, MOP, and surprise team? They give a little write-up on each. So everybody on on the staff has put in their predictions. Mike Mitchell, Reed Johnson has his. we got some new guys. Evan Wilsmore has joined the team. He's picking the Hamilton Tiger Cats. Rod Villagomez 
our uh, guru fantasy person, and we got him. We'll talk about him in a second. So if you want to head over to CFL News Hub, you can check out our staff predictions. It's always fun. We'll take a look at that at the end of the season and see how everybody did there. So, my friends, now let's have some fun and get into some picks for this week's Week 1 games, shall we? All right, it is time for some CFL betting picks that you can surely take to the bank. We'll see how you do here. Well, let's start with the first game, game one. The Hamilton Tiger Cats versus the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. I have Hamilton Tiger Cats, that's right, with the win, 32-24. to 24. I think there's some injury problems. Harris is out for Winnipeg. I think Hamilton has got the team. Everybody's picking Hamilton to win it. I think they come out strong in the beginning. Remember, these guys haven't really made any tackles yet, let alone play. So I think it's going to be a high-scoring game, at least as we kick things off. I think the defense usually starts to – usually it's defense in the beginning, and then the offense sort of picks up. I think it's going to be the opposite because of the layoff. So you got Hamilton Tiger Cats beating the Winnipeg Blue Bombers Thursday night. 32 to 24. We'll see. We'll track my picks throughout the season, see how they do. Game two, the BC Lions and Saskatchewan Rough Riders. I'm not really feeling the BC Lions this year, just to let you know. Saskatchewan, feeling them much more. I got the BC Lions 12, Saskatchewan Rough Riders 28. That is your picks. That's the second game. That's the Friday night game. Saturday's game. Toronto Argonauts versus Calgary Stampeders. I love my my guy, Bo Levi Mitchell. However, I think Toronto is going to have a good team this year. They have spent a lot of money on free agents. I think they're poised to do something big. So we've got Toronto uh, 28, Calgary 14. That's who I got picking. And this is the first game. This is the 7 p.m. Eastern game on uh the slate, the second 10 p.m. game, Ottawa Red Blacks versus Edmonton Elks. Winner, I got the Edmonton Elks winning it. Ottawa, 8, Edmonton Elks, 16. I'm not feeling Ottawa at all. I think there was some list somewhere that had all the all-star or top 50 players, and I think the Red Blacks had one in the top 50 or something like that, if I'm not mistaken, on something on TSN. And Edmonton, they've been kind of, I don't know, I'm kind of eh when it comes to Edmonton, to be honest with you. I'm not really liking what I've kind of seen behind the scenes there with that team. So I'm not really feeling them too much. Even though Jamie Elizondo and some other players on the team I was excited about. So that's it. So to recap, I got Hamilton Tiger Cats beating Winnipeg Blue Bombers 32-24. Then we got BC Lions losing to the Rough Riders 12 to 28. Then we have Toronto beating Calgary 28 to 14. And finally, Edmonton Elks beating the Ottawa Red Blacks 16 to 8. And there are your scores, your picks for week one of the CFL season. All right, now it is time to get into some fantasy picks for this week's program. Now, I have, uh, this is my team that I had picked. So I had Jer- Jeremiah Mazzoli, Kadeem Carey, Shaq Cooper. Now, Cam Phillips got traded or uh, got released and then got picked up. So I, I actually, um, so he got picked up. I don't think he's going to play at all, so I'm taking him out. I need some more money to spend on a player. I'm not really sure who I'm going to pick. But speaking of picks, before we get into that, let's get into Rod Villa Gomez, CFL DraftKings Fantasy 1 football picks, and this will help you too. He also has another list out there, but let's go through this one first. This is his DraftKings picks, and we also have a DraftKings board set up as well. So first up, he's got pay up for Trevor Harris 
Edmonton Elks, 9,400 as your quarterback. Uh, there were several weeks where Trevor was a bluster. Twice he scored more than 40 points, 20 points in an outing. So he's got Trevor Harris as his pick for uh, the quarterback. And then if you must fade, he's got Zach Kalaros of the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. I just don't think, with especially with uh, Andrew Harris, might not play. He is, that's his fade. Pay up for, he's got uh, William Powell, Saskatchewan Rough Riders, uh, with Andrew Harris possibly out. William Powell steps up to the role as a top running back to put in your lineup. Uh, let's definitely do that. Let's put him in. So we'll put him in William Powell. Let's go to running back. Uh, he's the second highest. All right, we'll put him in. Just because, remember, especially if you're new to fantasy uh, DFS and fantasy football when it comes to CFL, running backs aren't as v valuable, I guess, put up as points as your wide receivers do. He's got Johnny August Augustine, Winnipeg Blue Bombers, especially should if, if uh, Andrew Harris is going to be out. So I'm going to go with Augustine, actually, especially because Harris is out. Officially, he's out. You see him on here. Uh, well, who did they cite? Mm -mm -mm. What news source? Just out of curiosity. Oh, Winnipeg Sun. Okay. So Andrew Harris is out. So I'm definitely going to go with Augustine. That is a good pick because you get him at value of 5400 for that. A wide receiver, Brandon Banks, my guy. This is my guy. This is perennial potential MVP. This is the person that they have. I think he's going to go crazy, but he's just so expensive. That's the problem. So in my other fantasy league, uh, I thought about having him, but I need to – I wonder – I might make a switch here. Um, and take – well, let's see who uh, – okay. Let's take out Cam Phillips, and let's take out um, – did it remove it? Oh, there we go. Is it going to take a second to load here? The site's probably getting hit big time right now. So I'm going to go with Augustine on my fantasy lineup now, especially because Harris is out. And so he should be a lot cheaper. Uh, let's see. There's Johnny Augustine. So let's add him. And then this gives us some room at wide receiver. Oh, this gives us a lot of room. We have 5,000. Let's see. If I click on this, what is it going to do? Oh, you can't do that. 5,400 I got left. Uh, so well, let's keep going and see who's got Rod's picks here. So Brandon Banks, just very expensive. I don't like to, as much as I'm a Homer guy uh, and I'm a Tiger Cats guy and I like Banks a lot. That's just very expensive to put him in, even though, but actually you could, you could go for it because you got uh, Augustine at so low. So let's put him in there just for the, just for the heck of it. Let's see how that goes here. If you must fade, he's got Nick Dimsky from the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. Uh, among them, uh, oh yeah, Darvin Adams also, I believe, is potentially out. So the Nick Dimsky, let's, let's go look for him. Can we get get him on the cheap, or is he? Uh, let's see here. Oh, he might be even lower. Oh, here he is. Oh, perfect. So yeah, we want this guy. Ooh, and this gives us some more room to uh, move our players. Uh, can we get? Well, let's keep continue. We got a thousand on this. Let's continue with some of his picks. Uh, actually, I would go Dominski too as well on my DraftKings, uh, just because he's going to get a lot of action. Oh, oh yeah, he's cheap too, which means Banks makes Banks even more uh, probable to do well. All right, let's keep going. Um, Jordan Smallwood, Oliver, Ottawa Red Blacks. If you if you're a crossover fan from the XFL, you'd recognize Jordan Smallwood. His time with the LA Wildcats, he was just starting to heat up. They have him as the Ottawa Red Blacks as a as a cheap option. Hmm. 
might have to go with that one as well because then that would open up other things on DraftKings, especially because you went high. Let's go, let's go with his pick. Let's go with Smallwood. And we're going to go over all of these. Uh, let me see if I can find them in here. Oh, yeah. We'll definitely, as a flex, just because it saves you money because you go high. So if that's the case, now we can get a good quarterback. Cody Fajardo and uh, Jeremiah Mazzoli. Oh, man. I don't want to. I mean, you're going to double up with Mazzoli and Banks? Ah, yeah. I guess let's do it. Let's do it. See what happens. Since we went so low with Smallwood. So we stacked. We got Banks and Mazzoli on this lineup here. And then uh, let's finish out here. We got 1,000 left. Uh, I could move up on the flex position. Um, or I can move up on running back. Let's see what I can get for running back. Uh, add a player for running back. Let's see. I've got 6,000 to spend. 6,100. James Wilder. I can move up and get Shaq Cooper back. And I said 700 left over. And let's uh, let's try to find a flex wide receiver. Who do we got? Who can we get for four thousand seven hundred? Um, four thousand seven hundred thirty-eight. Chris Rainey. I don't want a running back. Winnipeg's Kenny Lawler. I would go with him. Wow, that's two Winnipeg guys, though. We need to mix it up. Let's go with uh, um, let's go with Josh Huff. Let's see if uh, Bo Levi Mitchell can sling it this week, and because he usually like to hit all of his targets. So we got there. So that's our fantasy picks. If you want to be part of this league, in the show notes, we'll post it out and everywhere. Or email me info at CFL News Hub if you want to be part of this. But here are my picks. I got Jeremiah Mazzoli. I've got Shaq Cooper, Johnny Augustine, Nick Dimsky, Kamar, Jordan, Josh Huff, and then the Argos defense. Actually, I could probably move up the, on defense. 3,800. I can't just go Hamilton, everything. We'll go, with, we'll go with the Argos. Go with the Argos. I could go with the Elks, but they kind of tick me off. Let's go with the Elks because they're playing who I believe is probably the worst team in the league so we'll go with the Elks on defense so there you got it there um on the DraftKings side of things I got a flex and defense same thing I'm going to go with the Elks just because they're playing a team that I didn't think is very good and this leaves me with oh I got a ton of money left over uh bu -bu 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 -bu. I got a ton of money uh, I'm not. I'm not feeling. I'll go with the BC Lion. Yeah, but hmm. let's go with Eric Rogers. I still have two thousand remaining. Uh, that means I could probably move. Can I move up quarterback? I can get Cody Fajardo. So I got Cody Fajardo, Augustine Banks. I still have a ton of salary left over. All right, Jordan. I'm gonna let you go. And who can I get at flex? I'll just move up. I got 4,800. Who can I get? Uh, let's see here. Let's go with uh, Shea Ross. Round it out and save the lineup there. So this is my DraftKings lineup. We'll see. We'll, we'll review both, not only the fantasy lineup, and you can go to fantasy.cfl.ca to fill out your lineup here. We'll check that out. We wanted to have fantasy football, you know, with the leagues and, and, and dynasty players and the whole thing. But it just takes a lot of work. That's in the works, hopefully, for next year. There is a fantasy app out there that we did. So that's in there. So there you have the fantasy lineup. Of course, with the help of Rod Villa Gomez, you can check out his article and it goes way more in depth. He's also got his fantasy football week one picks too. So you, basically you'll get the DFS picks every week and you'll get his fantasy football picks each week and, and why. So he, uh, just a great, the guy knows what he's doing 
Pro, so you can see um, what's going on there. This came out a little bit while ago after uh, some injury notes, but there you go. So both of those are on CFL News Hub right on the homepage. You can get all your fantasy news and information there. Also, uh, they have at they have total pick'em CFL. It's pick'em.cfl.ca. Of course, we already went through my picks. Um, so we picked Hamilton, we picked uh, Saskatchewan, we picked Toronto, and we picked Edmonton. Oh man, every so this is the pick trend. So this is kind of mixed. People are picking uh, Blue Bombers. I'm picking Ham. I'm just going Homer, man. I'm going Homer. It's okay. I'm going Homer. BC Lions. No one's picking them. I picked Saskatchewan. Toronto Argonauts, I'm telling you, I, I, I'm worried a little bit about Bo. And then, of course, Edmonton Elks, people are picking them too. So I'm going, my upset is the Argos. Upset Argos, just because they paid, their team is a lot different now. And I am picking them. All right, my friends. So there's the picks for this week's games. I want to hear your picks too. Leave that message in the comments. And hopefully we will check back next week, see how our picks did, and, and we'll make picks for week two. All right, we're going to take a commercial break, and we'll be right back with your social media stuff so, and your chat room. So stay tuned after this, my friends. This week on the MarkCast, technical difficulties aside, screw it. We're going to do it anyway. We'll do it live, right? We'll do it live. What do we got going on, Reem? Uh, big show this week. We got uh, your CFL and XFL stuff. We tried, you know, we, we were all, we were a CFL podcast last week. Now, uh, viewership, guys, you know, you want the CFL stuff. So we've got a, a big show today. We have Ed Tate. He's covering the Blue Bombers. Yeah, Canadian Football League Hall of Fame member. When you lose a season, it's it's devastating and you know you start to worry about your own job and your future and and so just to get to this point again is exciting and you can again you can feel it in town ticket sales are going well we have joey alfieri coming on joey covers the montreal outlets for tsn 690 very excited to get joey on i think the story i'm tracking the most here early on in the season is sloppiness slash uh injuries uh just uh, I'm, I'm curious to see if the guys can jump back into a game scenario and stay relatively healthy. And then this is exciting for me as a longtime VIP Torch subscriber. We have Greg Parks, who writes for XFL Board, even though they blocked all of us on Twitter. It could be that they just don't have anything to talk about. And, you know, that in and of itself seems to me to be a problem a year into this thing. And to still not really have made any games that you can talk about. Greg Parks has uh, has come on the show to talk. Uh, does the XFL have a PR problem? Paul, does the XFL have a PR problem? I think so. And the way you're marking out for Greg Parks right now, I got to say one thing to you. Oh, hi, Mark. Uh, but, but lots of other good stuff, you know, CFL training camp stuff. We booked our trips to the Grey Cup. Uh, we're getting ready. I'm going to Hawaii. We have some big guests coming up on the show. Uh, rhymes with uh, Gabe Baylor. Oh, we're going to do that. We're going to go there. We're going to grab him. Hopefully, hopefully other people will grab other people when we actually get that person on our show. That's all coming up this week. Anything else you wanted to add before we? I think that's, I think no? we've done good today. We'll see you no. guys tomorrow. Thanks. All right, we're back. And next time I do my fantasy picks, I need to check my boys in the chat room. Gabriel says he talks about CFL Newsflash as a name. That's not bad. Following us on Twitter. Appreciate that. Uh, how do we watch the games here in the States? ESPN2 has the games on and ESPN Plus. Mostly ESPN Plus. I get an ESPN Plus. I have a Roku television. So I have the ESPN app on there. So you can watch it on your phone. Uh, and I got... Uh, Disney Plus, so you get Hulu and ESPN. So if you got Disney Plus, kids will like it, and then you can get your football games, and you don't have to tell the wife. And you'd be like, oh, "Babe, I think we should get ESPN, or I'm sorry, we should get Disney Plus for the kids, because I'm really concerned about that." And then your wife be like, "Oh, you're so thoughtful." And then you can watch all the CFL games. Noah says, "What do you use for these leagues?" All right, so if you go to the CFL.ca website, they it's Pick'em. 
cfl.ca and fantasy.cfl.ca. That's where you can do that. And then, of course, DraftKings is where I, I made my league. I haven't actually, I got a, so I saved my lineup. One other tip that I give, I always do the 50 50 stuff, not these um, other kind of games. Um, but I'll have to add all that stuff later. Um, let's see, what else? That's what I use. Uh, Hawaiian Punch says, I think Bradley Oliveira is starting at running back instead of Andrew Harris. We'll have to, I'll have to keep that in mind as we get closer. Do Levi Noel is going to be a steal this year? This is from Noah. He's looking great in camp. Pick Noah over Dimsky. Banks, uh, Rich says, Banks is the man if he keeps healthy for Jardo. So I got for Jardo in there. Uh, Levi Noel, he says, is on the Argos. I'm reading your chat now. Rich says, Hamilton, Toronto, Elks, BC are his picks. Yeah, he's with me. We're the same one. But if you saw that other thing, everybody was picking um, Calgary. I, I, and here's the funny thing about these games, and especially if you're a new American fan like myself coming into the league, oh, make sure you smash the like button and give us a subscribe on the YouTube. We'd appreciate that is it's wide open. These teams are so different. Players have retired. You know, uh, who knows what this is going to look like. And they haven't even tackled anybody, let alone you know what that's lurking with the new you know what version, the upgraded version that's out there. So who knows? So we'll see with the deal is with that. Uh, let's go to some social media stuff. Shall we? First up, let's go to the Facebook's page. Alouette's co-owner Sid Spiegel passed away. Thoughts and prayers with the Alouette's family. Uh, this is according to Montreal Gazette's Herb Zerkowski. Stevie Myers, hopefully his son-in-law continues on with ownership and interest in the team. And some RIPs. Yeah, so definitely thoughts and prayers with the Alouette's uh crew as well. Also, sad news this week, former Toronto Argonauts all-star Lynn J. Shell passed away due to you-know-what at age 39. This is really sad story here. Uh, an elite athlete who uh, had passed away from it in the article. Uh, this is so uh, it was stunned to learn that the passing of Toronto Argonauts all-star Lynn Jay Shell, he was only 39 years old. Uh, details are emerging, according to Justin Barney of News for Jax. Shell died of a battle with you know what. A Lander native transitioned to teaching and coaching after his playing career, and he recently as assistant at Jackson High School made headlines back in 2018 after he disarmed a woman with a gun at Gene Rabalt High School in Jacksonville, where he's working as a gym teacher. Of the incident, he said, I'm not a hero, I'm just a guy. Uh, Wagner Linzel Shell Jr., better known as Lin J. Shell, was a hero journey on, off on the field through his playing days. He was the ultimate underdog despite having a stellar Hall of Fame career at Jacksonville University. And why does this matter? Because my daughter goes to Jacksonville University and will be going to Jacksonville University in October to visit. And uh, so a Jacksonville alum, which even makes it even, you know, that area has been hit hard by you know what so uh really great guy uh went undrafted after playing four seasons at ju and being a two-time all pioneer football league they just got rid of their football program by the way because it was too expensive after college played five seasons in the arena football before signing with the argos in the 2019 season beat all the odds it was named the argos most outstanding rookie his first season before earning back-to-back -back all-star selections as db in 2010 and 2021 so just just sad sad news man um you know just you know we take things too seriously sometimes and um enjoy it enjoy every moment you can because you never know man and this, things are starting to get a little squirrely again. Enjoy football. Enjoy your friends. Enjoy your family. Get out there. Have a good time with your kids. And because uh, you never know, man. You never know. And, and life is short. My dad died way too young. And that's the way I kind of live my life is like I just want to kind of get out 
of the rat race, do what I want to do, which is stuff like this and, um, enjoy life as much as I can, you know? So, I mean, you see these stories, guys way more in shape, probably than all of us combined. And that's just too sad there. So thoughts and prayers again with him and his family and the JU, it's, it's a shame that they had to close that football program down, but football is expensive. Um, just ask all the spring leagues trying to form and not form in the United States. Uh, Edmonton Elks <clears throat> make final round of roster moves. Uh, move on, my goodness. Okay, go Tiger Cats. They've always been the uh, – so Larry says they've always been – always be the Eskimos to me. The CFL cave to the ridiculous complaints. I will not. Good for you, Larry. You have fun with that because you're a awesome. No. Uh, we got the ESPN games are out there. We got that. We talked about that. Some people on the uh, – oh, let's go. I'm going back here. Oh, Come back to social. Gary says, I'm leaving this page as you don't post about the Canadian Football League all that much. I'm very disappointed in whoever runs this page. We also – the whole global thing is part of the CFL, so we covered the ELF – the European League of Football also on that. We cover the CFL. We also cover other things. If it offends you that much, there are some very sensitive CFL fans out there. Then you can go ahead. There was, he was, it was some other guy, too, was like, I'm blocking you guys because you cover something not the CFL. Like, we can cover other things. There's CFL all over the place on this page, especially now as the season. So relax. Again, it's not that serious, my friends. But I'm sure there's other places that you can go to get your CFL fix. So good luck with that. Um, oh, yeah. Uh, and this is about the the Lynn J. Shell stuff. Dan says, Co you know what really is an elite athlete, athlete? Yeah, I mean, it gets you. And Jake says, I wonder if he had any other health issues. You'd think not. But, I mean, it's just you don't, you don't know what's going on here, man. It's just tough, tough, tough. On to the Twitters. Nate Post One. Thank you for some of the info on the CFL DraftKings slate. That info is tough to find. Yes. That's why we brought Rod in to uh, take care of our a fantasy aspect of this stuff to get that all for you. So awesome. I'm glad you like it. Uh, it's officially week one uh, of the CFL season. And this guy says, what's CFL? Uh, okay, I'm not going to respond to that. And this was a couple of while ago. Oh, this was seven days till the CFL kicks off. Bill Dole fan, looking forward to it. Really getting into your YouTube channel is great. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Bill. Checking in, enjoying the show. Yeah, and I'm, I'm super excited as once the season starts, especially – when games start hitting televisions, that's when people start paying attention and getting into it. And, and I think they will in, in the States. At least we have a little bit of a runway before the NFL really kind of takes over. I'll be curious to see how, what the ratings are and all that kind of good stuff. So there, uh, let's go check in with the chat room. Uh, Rich says, you and Mark Cass do great CFL coverage. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Yes, they do a great job. They get a lot of great guests on there, and we're just trying to have fun. This is just about having fun, having fun and enjoying the podcast and just building a good community, and we're just getting started, man. We're just getting started. I got a lot. We got a lot more in the hopper, so don't worry about that. Let's go to the social. Rich says, great show. If you come to Hamilton for a game, would like to to a beer and talk football with you. My good friend also T ticket hall has a restaurant bar in Hamilton. Great atmosphere, rich. I'm in. Let's do it. Um, not in October looking at November, but again, with, you know, what lingering, I'm a little concerned about November and I, I don't know what's going to happen with travel in the United States as things We'll just kind of keep an eye on things, but I, I haven't booked anything. But if if it's if there's an all clear by you know 
the end of October, then I'm going to book something at least for one of those things. I'm just, I'm just, I'm not, I'm not, I'm, I'm getting on the, uh, instead of being bullish on everything, I've started to get bearish on it. Let's just put it that way. Man on the moon with Cam Phillips and PJ Walker are on the Argos now. Then I am 100% behind them. PJ Walker is not on the Argos. The combination of players are more responsible for the Roughnecks undefeated season. PJ Walker is not on the Argos. D Tom America ESPN Plus for CFL games is $6 a month. That's not bad at all. Very right there. Frozen Delta Records says, I'm in Canada, so I get the games on TSN, but that's a pretty good deal. Awesome. Yes. Yeah, so if TSN in Canada, ESPN if you're in the United States of America. Frozen Delta Records says, question and answer. My homer pick I have to go with is Ottawa Red Blacks, but reality is I'm going to with a repeat Winnipeg versus Hamilton Grey Cup game with Hamilton longest Grey Cup winless drought winning at home, which winning at the Grey Cup at home is a rarity. I hope so. I hope Hamilton just rolls through everybody this year. Also says, fully, you're fully jabbed. Just drive up from Maryland. Not a big drive to Hammer under eight hours pre you know what. I drive to southern U.S. from Ottawa yearly. Uh, you can also come up to Ottawa to see your crappy tie cats on September 22nd. What? You just had picked them to win it all. Yeah, I, I'll, I'll, it's, it's just we'll wait and see on what's going on. He says Katie Baroness already hosted Thursday night CFL games, so not new role for her. And she knows her CFL, Rod Smith, the voice, was a great host, but he's also a good play-by-play -play guy. So that was that on. Oh, so one of the questions I have, I'm going to throw it out to the chat room. This is the question of the week. Who do you think is going to be the worst team in the CFL this season? And it's just been mentioned. I think the Ottawa Red Blacks are going to be the worst team in the CFL. What do you guys think in the chat room before we wrap things up? I want to hear what you have to say there. I like to hear what you have to say. I'm nice about that. That's the team I think. So let me know what you think in the chat. Also, let's see if there's anything with our friends on the Facebooks. We got that there. So that's it for this week's show. Super excited to have games. Remember to join the MarkCast as they have live coverage after the game. I thought that was a great idea. And I'm like, dang, why didn't I think of that? But that's a good idea. So you can check out them. I'll be on there under CFL News Hub. Say hello. Definitely hop on that after. I'm looking forward to the games. I'm looking forward to American fans coming in because that's our mission statement with CFL News Hub. Despite some haters out there, we are all about trying to bring the American fan. There are is a plethora of football fans in the United States that would love to watch something other than college and NFL. And I think right now CFL is what they can watch they've watched leagues like the fan control football league that had different rules i think they'll get used to the cfl and it'll be exciting to see their reaction and really hear your reaction after this week's games so oh that's my show notes all right so remember we're live every wednesday at 8 p.m excited to see what you guys think of this week's show we got our picks we put that out there um, and remember, if you want to be part of the show, email info at CFL News Hub with your MP3s or videos. And remember, we're looking for a name for the show, and you can be able to get this on podcast. Uh, so you can be able to download this probably by next week. You'll be able to go out there. We'll have the official once everything gets out there. There. Appreciate everybody in the chat room for staying by. Uh, let's see. Rich says Red Blacks also. He thinks they'll be the worst team. So thanks, Rich. Noah, Hawaiian Punch, uh, Gabriel, Cocoa. I appreciate all you guys checking in on the uh, YouTubes, hanging out with us. Enjoy the games. Finally get to say that we can talk about players and stats and not anything else but football. I am super excited about that. That's it for move me, folks. Again, we will see you next week live Wednesday at 8 p.m. That's it for me, folks. And I will see you all later. Enjoy the games, my friends.